extend to like Alexa, to your mother, like, you know, just because they have access to you, like, do they understand like, okay, you know, we don't fear death or is it different? Because they're not, I mean, you can be married to you, but you're not you. So it's not the same visions. Well, Alexa is the, Alexa, it's actually funny how we kind of came to be because Alexa always feared death. She'd fear death. She feared death. You could not even mention the word death around Alexa. You know, the first time I met her and I gave her reading her, I saw her grandmother with her. She literally almost ran out of the coffee shop because of the fact that she was so afraid of, you know, just hearing about someone that had died. And it's funny because for the longest time, she wouldn't come to my shows, wouldn't come to my events. She'd come in for maybe 10 minutes. And then once a deep reading happened, like someone losing a son, boom, she'd be, she'd like walk out of the room. Like that was it. She'd like, and it was funny because she would come in for like just a, just a few short moments or uh, just to listen to a few readings. And then she'd get overwhelmed and have to leave just thinking about death. But from now it's different. And it's funny because what first started with her so afraid and then her picking up on little bits here and in, in here and there, I know because of the readings that I do now she's become so inquisitive. Like even today I was sending out, I sent her a newsletter about what happens if you don't meet your soulmate here in this world. And, you know, she's on my email newsletter list. So she's like, oh, she's like, I, she's like, wait a minute. You know, there might be a chance that you don't meet your soulmate. And then she started asking me all these questions about the other side and about soulmates and about all these things. And it's so funny because years ago, she would have never even opened an email. She would have never even read about her or asked questions because she was so afraid. But what my point is, is that it opened up a new side of her. And that's what I'm hoping that my readings do. I hope that people do ask questions. I hope that people do want to know about heaven and the afterlife, because the readings are not just about the person that's getting read. That's the biggest misconception. With each reading that I do, I get a little glimpse into heaven, the afterlife, and we learn spiritual lessons that are so important to our lives as humans. And listen, I don't know everything there is to know about death and dying. I didn't, I didn't learn about death and dying through reading books or researching by Google. It's not a Google search, you know? It's something that I've learned over the years just by talking to the spirit world. And then do you mourn a death like the rest of us, just because you know what happens and people end up okay? I mean, I do. I mean, we always, listen, doesn't matter how much faith you have, doesn't matter if you're a psychic medium, you're always going to miss that person's physical presence, right? Because we're here on earth. It's a physical world. We miss not being able to pick up the phone and call a person. We miss not being able to go to their house. We miss driving by their house and not seeing them outside or seeing their car in the driveway. It's something that we're going to miss. We, there's no way that you can get around that. But the secret is seeing, seeing that silver lining and knowing that, okay, even though their physical presence isn't here, we might miss them physically. There's another way to get in touch with them. And the best analogy to talk about that, David, is if you lost your loved one because they moved, right? Let's say that your best friend or your mom or your dad said, hey, listen, I'm moving to another country. Would you mourn them? Absolutely. Would you mourn them, like, for example, not being here? Yes, you'd miss them every day, but you'd have peace in your heart knowing that they're still alive, they're, they're well, and that they're okay. And that's the same peace that I want to give to people here in this world as well. That makes a lot of sense. Well, speaking of your live shows, you do have a lot of live shows coming up in Q2. You're going to be in Boston, I think, Canada. I love that you call it Q2, by the way. Q2. I I guess that's like so, that's so business of me, right? It is. It is. I'm going to start using that. Okay, coming up in Q2, we're coming to. That's yeah, that's so I mean, like, like you know, I, well, I, I looked at your dates and I'm like, they're all like during the second quarter. It's like, you're going to be in Canada. You're, you're, you're out on the road for most of it. Yes. It's my first time coming to Canada. I am so excited about it. So I'm coming to Edmonton, uh, Canada, and also I'm coming to uh, Rama, Ontario, Canada. So I'm so excited about that. And I gotta tell you, I didn't realize I even had fans in Canada. So I'm really excited to be coming and meeting everybody there. And then also we're just in the middle of adding brand new, uh, a brand new tour schedule as well. So right now you'll see like Massachusetts dates on there. There's like a Biloxi, Mississippi event. And there's, it might seem a little bit scarce, but this is the time Q2, right? Where everybody goes in where where, like they start uh, going in and uh, planning out the whole tour schedule and we start to release it all at once. So I'm just as excited as you because I never know where I'm going to be. Well, anyone that doesn't know what your live shows are like, they can go follow you now that you're on TikTok. You've amassed a m- lot of fans in a short period of time. Yeah, you know, I didn't even know. 
I didn't know all about that. So I, I was on TikTok all the time, all right? Especially during the pandemic. And then I never thought to post like my stuff on there. I'm like, who the hell wants to see a psychic medium? Because, you know, you see all dancing and things. I'm like, I didn't want to bring down the vibe. But I started just a couple of weeks ago, like posting a, a few short videos and it just like blew up and everyone's like, oh my God, I'm so happy to see you on TikTok. I can't believe you're here. And um, it, 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 TikTok is just like, I, I feel like taking over the world. Is it harder, like you mentioned, Alexa, like you gave her a ring, like, is it harder, you know, like doctors say, I, there's some famous doctors that are like, I, I don't want to operate on my mother. I, I don't want to operate on a family member. Like, is it hard to give like readings to family members and people you love? Is it harder? Is it not as hard? Or is it neither uh, the, the above? Um. Well, it's difficult because like the relationship is still the same. So for example, right? It's like when you give advice to your mom or to your dad. Have you ever had the experience where you give your mom or dad advice or someone that you love advice and it seems like they listen to everybody else but you? Yeah, that's what I go through every day because it's like I I'm like, listen, I'm a psychic medium. I can see this. This is what's going to happen. This one's like, for example, I was just telling um, my my sister in law that was giving her some dating advice, whatever. And um, she's like, well, my friend said this. I'm like, well, is your friend a psychic medium like does Your friend see the, the you know, the departed. And like, I think that they forget kind of who I am sometimes. So I feel like that they don't really sometimes they don't listen. I'm like and then they'll come back to me and they'll or like my favorite. My favorite part is, is that when. Uh, like I was telling my my father-in-law um, some, uh, I, I had some insights for him about something to do with his past uh, relationship. Uh, I'll just give it to you really quick. So in his past relationship, I had to put all his personal information out there. But he, anyways, he had this this dog with this, with this, um, with his past girlfriend and they broke up. And I said to him, I go, hey, I go, just to let you know, she's not going to be keeping that dog. Like I would text her because that dog's going to come back to you. And I know he like really had this bond with this dog. And he's like, no, you're off on that. And I'm like, no, I'm not off. I'm actually seeing like that. She's not going to keep the dog. He's like, no, 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 because she's got kids and the kids are in love with that dog and so on and so forth. And he kept telling me like, yeah, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. And, and he's like, I don't think so. And then next thing you know, like six months later, he's like, Matt, you're never going to believe what happened. He's like, they gave the dog away. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I told you to text. And he's like, I didn't believe it. I'm like, do you not see what I do for a living? Like I told you they were going to keep the dog. And he was like, so he's like, I should have listened. I should have listened. Well, anyways, that's, that's just kind of an insight into my life. But it's like, listen, people listen to me when I speak, please. I know. What do you think is like the biggest like misperception about what you do? Like, what do you think people have all wrong when they hear you're a psychic medium? Well, first of all, the thing is, is that I, there's, there's so much of a misconception and there's, a, there's so much false information that's put out there. And the first thing is, is that people think that they can come to a medium and that they can just go and talk to whoever they want. Like, for example, you know, I don't want to listen. I don't want to comment on, on how other mediums do their readings, but you know, like, for example, there was this one person who came to me who said that.